Hello everyone, this is Stephen Balch, your instructor for Computer Applications Online at Ozarka College. Uh, in this part three of Word Module 2 videos, I'm going to take you from pages WD2-35 to 2-57 in your textbook. Alright, so at this point, we have created uh, most of the, we've added most of the text to the research paper. And if you haven't already typed the text on step 2 on page 2-35, you'll need to go ahead and do that. And as you can see, I've already typed in that text. And now our research paper is two pages. You'll notice it automatically uh, broke the page down to a second page uh, when you type that text uh, there that you see on page 2-35. Alright. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is after we type in the text on step 2 there on page 2-35 we need to make sure we press the space bar and I've already done that and then what we're going to do is we're going to insert our next citation. So just like we did in the first two uh, videos for this module we're going to go up to the references tab and we're going to click on the insert citation button and on the drop down list box that shows uh, when you click on insert citation you're going to click on add new placeholder okay we're going to type in the last name of the author for this particular source which is Sanchez which you see there on step 4 on page 2-35 once we get the placeholder name typed in we're going to click OK and you'll see the citation appear uh, in our document where our insertion point was. Then we're going to uh, type a period, key, uh, press the period key on the keyboard to end that sentence. Alright, now the next uh, page in your book talks about showing and hiding white space between pages in your document. You can just kind of look through that to save some time. I'm going to skip over that for now because it's not really going to change your document itself. Um, it's just diff a different way of viewing uh, one page to the next in your document. Alright, so next thing we need to do is on page 2-37. We need to click somewhere in the citation placeholder uh, that we just inserted. So we're going to click where it says Sanchez there, where we just inserted the citation. And we're going to click the down arrow on the right side of the box there that appears around the citation and we're going to click on edit source because at this point we've added the placeholder or the citation for the source but we haven't actually added the source information so we need to do that here so just like we've done before we're going to click the type of source box arrow uh, to bring down the list box of different options for the type of source. And this source is a website. So we're going to find website in the list and click on it. And then we're going to click the author uh, field box and type in the author's name there that you see on step 5 on page 2-37. Type it in exactly the way you see it. Alright. Then you're going to go down to the name of web page field box and type in what it shows there on step 6. And then you're going to press tab to move down to the year box. And actually, um, we're not going to type anything in the year box. What we're going to need to do is go down to the year access box. Alright, so you're going to go down to year accessed and type in 2021 as the year accessed. Then press tab and type in OCT period, which just the abbrevi abbreviation for October, as the month accessed. And then you're going to press tab and type in 1 as the day accessed. And then press tab and then the medium, you're going to type in web as the medium. And then you're going to click OK. And so now we've added the source information for the Sanchez source. 
All right, now we're going to press the N key on our keyboard uh, to deselect the citation. And then we're going to type in the, uh, actually, before we type that in, we're going to press Enter. We're going to type in the last paragraph of the uh, research paper, which is shown on step two on page 2-38 in your book. So we're going to go ahead and type that in real quick here. All right, and then once we've typed that last paragraph, uh, paragraph of the flyer, we're going to click the Save button up on the Quick Access Toolbar to save the changes that we've made to our document since the last time we saved it. And now we are ready to add the alphabetical works cited page to our research paper. All right, now according to MLA style, the works cited page needs to be on a page by itself. So we're going to need to insert what's called a manual page break, which it discusses there on page 2-39 in your book. All right, so we're going to need to make sure our insertion point is at the end of the paragraph that we just typed in, that last paragraph of the body of the flyer, or the of the research paper, and then we need to click insert up on the ribbon. And over on the left-hand side, you'll see a page break button. Go ahead and click on page break and that will insert the manual page break in the document and so it'll create a third page uh, in our research paper and now what we're ready to do is we need to apply the normal style to this uh, third page of our research paper just to make sure that everything is formatted uh, correctly on our uh, works cited page so we're going to go to the home tab okay and just like it says to do on page 2-40 step 1 we're going to click the home tab then we're going to click the normal style button in the styles gallery even if it's already selected go ahead and click it anyway okay and that will uh, make sure that our works cited page is formatted correctly alright so once you click the normal style button Next thing we're going to do is the works cited title needs to be centered horizontally on the page. And of course we could just use the center align button in the paragraph group on the home tab. But in your book it's wanting you to kind of learn how to use some of the keyboard shortcuts uh, to, uh, to align text. And so when we want to center text we can press control E on our keyboard. So go ahead and press Control E on your keyboard, and it will center the paragraph. And then you're going to type in Works Cited as the title, and then press Enter. All right. Now when you press Enter, when you've applied some uh, formatting to the paragraph above, um, it's going to copy that uh, formatting down to the next paragraph. So You'll notice the, the second paragraph here on the, on the Works Cited page is centered. Um, so we're going to need to change that back to left alignment. And the way you do that on the keyboard is you press Control L. So press Control L on your keyboard. It'll uh, left align the paragraph. And then what we need to do is we now need to insert 
our uh, works cited uh, entries on our works cited page. All right, so to do that, you're going to click the references tab up on the ribbon. You're going to click on the uh, bibliography button in the citations and bibliography group. And then you're going to click on insert bibliography at the on the uh, very bottom of that drop down list box. I don't want you to use any of the built in uh, bibliography styles. I want you to just click on insert bibliography at the bottom. Okay. All right. And then once you've done that, it will show the three sources uh, that we added as we created the research paper. And now we're ready to save this research paper again. So we're going to click the save button to save the changes. Okay. Now one thing you'll need to do before we continue here is you'll need to check your works cited entries word for word and make sure that everything is uh, correct, that you have all the text that you should, that you don't have any additional text that you don't need, everything's formatted correctly. Um, and I'm going to show you in just a minute how you can correct mistakes on your works cited page by going in and editing uh, a source. Alright, so once we've done that, we're going to now on page 2-43 if you ever notice that there is a mistake on one of the sources on your Works Cited page, uh, you can use the Manage Sources button on the References tab uh, to go in and access a particular source that we uh, previously entered and edit it. Okay, That's what we're going to learn to do right here. So what we want to do is we want to click the Manage Sources button up on the References tab in the Citations and Bibliography group. That will open up the Source Manager dialog box. And in this dialog box, we're going to uh, look under the current list, which shows the three sources that we uh, entered for this particular research paper. And we're going to find the uh, ZAL source. Okay, this one right here. All right. We're going to, that last one in the list there, the Zhao, uh, Shen Li Zhao, we're going to uh, click that one uh, under the current list, and we're going to click on Edit. Okay, once you click on Edit, you'll see the Edit Source dialog box appear, and this is the same Edit Source dialog box that we used uh, to initially create the information for this source, to enter the, the source information. So uh, you can use that same edit source dialog box to make changes uh, by, again, using the Manage Sources button. So here what we want to do is we want to click in the Periodical Title text box. And we want to delete the word AND from the title. So right now it says Technology Aches and Pains. I'm sorry, not, not in the title, in the periodical title. So go down to periodical title, where it says monthly medical and review. And we're going to delete the word and in that periodical title. Okay, so uh, just uh, double click on the word and to select it and press delete on your keyboard. And it will delete that word. So now it should read on the periodical title uh, field box, monthly medical review. Okay. Once you've done that, you're going to click OK. And you may get a message that uh, says this source exists in your master list and current document. Do you want to update both lists? Just click on Yes. And then go ahead and click Close for the Source Manager dialog box. Okay. Now, you'll notice that the change that we made uh, to the... Uh, to the periodical title does not automatically uh, it's not automatically changed uh, on our works cited page so what we're going to do next is update the fields in the works cited uh, entries to make sure that our change that we just made uh, is updated on the list so what we're going to do is on page 2-44 we're going to right click 
anywhere on the works cited entries on the works cited page just right click and you'll see a shortcut menu one of the items on the shortcut menu is update field you're going to click on update field and now it should uh, have that that change uh, to that last source on the works cited page instead of mo uh, monthly and monthly medical and review it should now read monthly medical review in other words uh, it'll show the change that we made taking the word and out of the periodical title all right um, the next couple of pages of the uh, module are things I'm going to kind of skip over because it's not really going to change our document uh, you can just kind of look through that on your own uh, it's pretty self-explanatory um, next thing we want to do is on page 2-46 we're going to learn how to insert a citation using an existing source. All right. So once you've added a source to a work site or to a uh, research paper, uh, you can actually, if you need to cite that source more than once, uh, you can uh, just basically uh, use that same source information that you previously entered and just add an additional citation for that same source. So that's what we're going to learn to do here. So we want to position the insertion point at the location for the citation, which is at the end of the fifth sentence in the second paragraph. So we need to scroll up to the first page of our doc actually, yeah, the first page of our document. And we're going to find, you'll have to kind of look at the picture there on page 2-46 to see exactly where we need to insert the citation it's going to be after the period after the word keyboard in that second to the last sentence in the second paragraph okay again it shows you a picture and points to it uh, on page 2-46 once we've done that we're going to and actually we want our insertion point instead of after the period we want it before the period okay so we're going to insert it before the period. And then what we're going to do is click References up on the ribbon. We're going to click on Insert Citation. And you'll notice the three sources that we previously entered for this document appear at the top of the drop-down list. The one that we need to click on is Clark and Nadir. All right, so the very first one there, Clark and Nadir, you're going to click on that one, and it will add that citation uh, to the location where our insertion point was. All right, so we've got that done. All right, now, on page 2-47, it wants us to learn how to move a citation. So if you accidentally insert a citation in the wrong place, uh, you can just use drag and drop uh, to move it. And that's what we're going to learn how to do. So what we want to do is click somewhere in the citation to be moved, which in this case is the Clark and Nadir uh, citation that we just added. So you're just going to click in the citation to select it. And then what we're going to do is point to the little uh, citation tab uh, on the top left hand corner of the box around the citation all right and then what we're going to do is uh, the new location for the citation is going to be at the very end of that uh, paragraph uh, paragraph two in our paper you'll kind of need to look at the picture there on page 2-47 to see where we need to drag uh, the citation. So I'm just going to drag the citation down uh, to the left of the period at, uh, after the last sentence in that second paragraph, just like that. And if you do it the first time and don't get it in the right location, uh, simply use the same technique to move it 
uh, to the right location. All right, and you'll need to look at the picture there on page 2-47, figure 2-68 to make sure that you got it in the right location. Again, the citation should be immediately to the left of the uh, period at the end of the last sentence of the second paragraph. Now, when you insert a when you uh, insert a citation like that by moving it, um, you may have an extra space uh, that appears to the uh, left of the citation. In this case, we do have an extra uh, an extra space there, so we need to click uh, to the left of the citation and. delete that extra space there because we just need one space um, to the left of the citation. All right, so once we've done that, next thing it wants us to do is to learn how to use find and replace. All right, so if you have a particular word um, that you use in several places in your document and you want to uh, use a different word, uh, for that, uh, for your document, um, instead of having to find each occurrence of that word and replacing it manually, there is a special tool in Word called Find and Replace that allows you to do it more efficiently. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the Home tab up on the ribbon, and on the far right in the Editing group of the Home tab, you'll see the Find button. You're going to click on Find. And on the left-hand side, you'll see a little navigation pane appear that uh, allows us to type in what we're searching for. All right, we're going to search for auditory on page 2-48, step 2. So you're going to type in auditory. Make sure you spell it correctly, uh, all right, because it's only going to look for exact matches. All right, once we've found... Basically, once you type in what you're uh, in the navigation pane, what you're trying to find in your document, it will uh, highlight uh, those particular occurrences of that word in your document. Okay, and then what it's what we need to do next is we want to replace all occurrences of the word auditory with the word listening. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is first you can go ahead and close the navigation pane over here by clicking its close button. And then we're going to go to the replace. Uh, we're going to click on replace on the right side of the uh, home tab. And it should already have the word auditory in the find what box. And you're going to click on the replace with box and type in the word that we want to replace it with, which is the word listening. And again, make sure you spell that word correctly because it's going to uh, enter it exactly the way that you uh, type it in the replace with box. All right, once you've done that, you're going to click on replace all at the bottom of the find and replace dialog box. And it will give you a little message. It says all done. We made two replacements. You're just going to click OK in that box. And then go ahead and click the close button and now uh, it should have the word listening in those two locations where we did have the word auditory. Alright, next thing it wants us to do on the bottom of page 2-49 two, uh, it talks about the use of the thesaurus in Microsoft Word which definitely comes in handy when you're doing a research paper. So what we want to do anytime you want to find a synonym for a word um, you can use the thesaurus to do it. And so what we want to do in our case is find the word find the word continual uh, in our document. Okay? And It's going to be in the second paragraph of the paper. All right. So the word continual. And it's going to be the second occurrence of it. So it's going to be in the last sentence. It's 
going to be in the last sentence of the second paragraph where it says taking continual breaks. What you're going to do to find the synonym for the word continual, you're going to right click on the word continual and on the shortcut menu that appears you're going to point to synonyms and the synonym that we want to replace it with is the word frequent. So you're going to click on the word frequent in the list and it just changes the word for you. So that's how easy it is to use the thesaurus to find synonyms uh, in a research paper. Alright, next thing we want to do is check our spelling okay, and grammar uh, before we finish up this uh, research paper. So to do that, you're going to press Control Home on your keyboard and what that does is that moves your insertion point to the very beginning of your document so that when we start the spelling and grammar uh, at once, it will start at the very beginning of the document and check for spelling and grammar errors. Okay, So on the bottom of page 2-50, after we press Control Home, we're going to click the Review tab up on the ribbon. And then we're going to click on the Spelling and Grammar button, which is on the far left on the Proofing section. So you're going to click on Spelling and Grammar. And what the Spelling and Grammar uh, button does is it will take you step by step through all of the potential mistakes in your document. All right. Now, some of, the, some of the things that are flagged are not actually going to be misspelled words. Uh, they may be proper names. Uh, for example, the very first thing that's flagged is the name of the instructor. And that last name of the instructor is not in Word's dictionary, so it flags it. Uh, when you have something that's been flagged that you want to ignore because you know it's correct, you're just going to click on Ignore down at the bottom. Uh, click on ignore all okay and then uh, it'll find the next uh, spelling error and this word it had us intentionally misspell the word hearing um, and so on that one you're going to find the correct spelling and which is this one right here and you're going to click on it and it will correct that now um, those are all the mistakes that um, that it shows in the book. Now you may have other spelling and grammar errors. Uh, if you had some errors as you type the, the text in the document, you'll need to go in and correct each one of your spelling and grammar errors uh, as you go through the spelling and grammar check. Okay, So check all your errors. Once you're done, it'll say spelling and grammar check is complete. Just click OK. And And now we are ready to save this research paper for the final time. And that ends, there, there's a, a little bit more uh, in, in the module, uh, but it's stuff that's not really going to change your document at all. So I'm just going to let you kind of work through that on your own if you want to. Um, it's going to have you learn how to add comments uh, and how to delete and change comments and reply to comments. Um, but again, that's not really going to change your document at all because um, it's just going to have you delete the comments later. So you just can kind of look through that or, or work through that on your own if you want to to save some time. I'm going to skip over that. So really this document um, should be ready to upload into Miles Arca. Before you do that though, you'll need to check your uh, paper against the example in your book on page WD2-3. On that page it shows all three pages of the research paper the way they should look. Uh, so double check, triple check uh, your document uh, before you submit it at Miles Arca. Also check to make sure that you have all of the citations uh, added uh, using the edit uh, or uh, add cite uh, insert citation uh, button. Uh, all of these citations should be active. In other words, when you click on them, you should see a box appear around them. If you just typed in those citations without using the uh, insert citation button, 
you'll need to go back and make sure that these citations are active. Alright, so just click on each one, make sure they're active, then go down to the Works Cited page, click on the Works Cited page and make sure that um, that you when you click on the Works Cited entries, you should, should see uh, that those entries become highlighted and that lets you know uh, that you actually use the proper techniques to insert the works cited entries on the page. If you just type those in, then you did it incorrectly and you'll need to go back and look through your book uh, and do it the way I did it where you're using the uh, insert bibliography button to do so. Alright, and so once you've done all that, you've checked everything, then you're, you're ready to upload it into Miles Arca. So thank you very much and just let me know if you have questions.